All right, so now we're ready to figure out how to decode the periodic table. So anytime you look at the periodic table, you're always going to see these four things. So this first number in the top, at the very top, is always the atomic number. And the atomic number gives us important information. It tells us the number of protons and number of electrons that make up an atom. Then the next thing that we have is our element symbol. And that's just a shortened version of the element. Some people, especially looking at gold, they're like, where in the heck did AU come from when we're dealing with gold? Often that's because the symbols might be tied to the Greek or Latin form of the word um, or the element. So that's why sometimes you've got weird symbols that are completely different than the name. Then we have, of course, the element name. And then the last information we have is our atomic mass. And this tells us the mass of one element. So this tells us the mass of gold is 197 atomic mass units. And if you remember from up here, the nucleus contains all of the mass of the atom. And that is the mass of our protons and the mass of our neutrons. And neutrons and protons, since they're exactly the same size, they both weigh one atomic mass unit. So that'll be easy when we're left trying to figure out, okay, I have this information. How do I know how to draw what um, one element of gold looks like? So now I'm going to give you a few rules that can help. So the first rule would be the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, which is also equal to the number of electrons. So that leaves us with our neutrons. How do we figure out how many neutrons we're dealing with? Because if we look up here, gold has 79 protons and 79 electrons. So this is where we have to use our atomic mass. So the atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So that means if we know we have 79 protons, our total mass is 197, then you just subtract the two and that gives you the number of neutrons. Now, some periodic tables might not have a nice even number, and that's because neutrons, sometimes an element might have more or less neutrons, even though the number of protons always stays the same. So the mass might be reported with a decimal, which would indicate the average mass of the element. So what you would need to do when using the atomic mass to find the number of neutrons round to the nearest whole number. And that would help you be able to have what you need to get the average number of neutrons to draw, since you can draw part of a neutron. Um, so those are some rules that will definitely help later on this week when you're decoding the periodic table. So now you're ready to be able to move on and use the simulation to try and build some protons, neutrons, or build some different elements.